my name is Margaret Heffernan. I'm a businesswoman, I'm a chief executive, and I'm an author. The main argument of my most recent book, which is called A Bigger Prize, is that competition doesn't invariably deliver all the outstanding qualities that we hope for. I, I would argue that in the last 50 years, we've really doubled down on competition as a main motivator for individuals, for businesses, for institutions, indeed even for governments. And what we're starting to see is just a spectacular trail of, in fact, totally predictable failures and costs. In education, as it's become more competitive, we're seeing an explosive rate of cheating and plagiarism. In sport, we're seeing a huge rise in doping, in cheating, in genetic manipulation. In science, we've seen an extraordinary rise in the number of retractions, that is, scientific papers withdrawn because it turns out that the data wasn't sound or was, in fact, fraudulent. In business, we're seeing that the attempt to manage people by making them compete with each other, in fact, just produces high degrees of dysfunction and waste. And my argument is not just that these are now visibly predictable out outcomes of competition, but that there is an exactly parallel, opposite way of doing things that is more sustainable, more successful, and I would argue much better fitted for the 21st century. So we're seeing different kinds of education systems, for example, in Finland and in Singapore, that are teaching children to be better collaborators to solve problems together. We're seeing that if you really want more of the population to take part in sport, what you have to do is lower the stakes, not raise the stakes. We're seeing open innovation platforms like Innocentive and public-private partnerships tackle the really big diseases and problems in healthcare. We're seeing corporations adopt far more collaborative organizational structures and collective rewards. We're seeing companies like Arup, like Method Home Care Products, adopt a very different attitude to growth and to size, and to accept that big is not always a measure of prosperity. We're seeing that new companies like, um, whether it's American Apparel or it's Emma Bridgewater, that absolutely refuse to join the race to the bottom, which leads to zero hour contracts for workers and an overly flexible workforce. And we're seeing companies that are starting to define their success far more in terms of the sustainable good they do for the workforce and the community in which they operate, rather than just selling things more cheaply, faster, uh, to more and more people. I think what we're seeing is we have seriously now to question competition and its side effects every time it's presented as a reason why we should accept a new policy or a new law.